Where are you? Oh, I'm here. I just, oh, my God. I'm like, okay. I thought we just drifted off into space. We did. Well, we drifted off. I uh, I, I don't know what it is. Um, just this Skype communique, you know, it glitches out sometimes. So we'll hang with it, see what happens, try to get the information out. A lot of stuff to talk about. Not in what they're doing so much is just the propagandization of it. You know, I mean, because, all right, yeah, I mean, here's here's just a partial list of the things that are not shut down. Domestic surveillance, NSA domestic programs, global <laughs> spying, roving TSA searches, Viper strikes, USA Patriot Act, NDAA, militarized police state, SWAT team raids, Domestic drones, schoolhouse to jailhouse tracking, overcriminalization, privatized prisons, endless wars. Hey, you get the idea. Right. We should be setting up. Hey, when not that get their uh, attention? Well, we're going to be officially closed. Uh, we open up. We're going to we're shutting them down. I want to see that happen. There's uh <laughs> Yeah, I mean, with all this whining, crying about the government shutdown, um, you know, let's, let's, let's look at the numbers here. 63% of all federal workers are still working. 85% of all government activities are still being funded during this so-called shutdown. You know, what they shut down, they shut down the stuff that people have grown to rely on, like... Uh, WIC programs, food stamps, the things that, that people have gotten used to, you know, and rely on. Um, you know, this is all more psychological warfare, again, for the hearts and minds, trying to instill in our minds, that, you know, how much we need them, you know, how important they are, and, and all that good stuff. Yeah, right. They, they want to... Uh it's still that dominance any way they can. So. so while the government is claiming to be shut down, uh, we're still very much hard at work here on the front lines for bringing the correct information, the information that you'd need to know, things you may have never even considered or thought about. We will, you know, we'll uh, bring you our unique, perspective from our journeys our unrivaled unparalleled unfurled unadulterated version even you can always count on bone rocco for that yep and we are here trying to enforce basically our position now we've already legislated of the fraudulent assignment of the general welfare clause under the Articles of Confederation, Article 12, where we were pledged for the debt, year after the Constitution was written, um, you know, and been on corporate welfare ever since. So we did a reassignment of that, legislated out of this here house. And I do believe Rockwell's Vanzetti is on that parchment. <laughs> exactly. I am um, my uh how shall we say is it a re is it is it a reprint presentation of me at that point ink on paper does that ink somehow present me places uh well it's your you're just your autograph isn't it correct it's my autograph we only spoke the truth on that we only told them what they did absolutely. And and we said, hey, you're a house, I'm a house. Wouldn't you like to be a house, too? Uh, if not, uh, you can uh, be in treaty with each other. You can be citizens of one another's houses. Still being a house, yet a house unto yourself, but a house, a citizen to another house. And let's see here. The important information, though, right now is that uh, the Big Mac is cheaper than a can of dog food. It, it is. It is. Big Mac, and we we're gonna have a uh, have this guy call in. How about that? 
Mr. We Totted. It's... I'm just looking at that. Anyway, he nods. You nod, I read a magazine and, you know, try and do a radio show. <laughs> but, you know, hey, life's a funny place. <laughs> what are you doing there now, compadre? Uh, let's see. I had something. Well, there's something I actually wanted to pick up on this week's show because I didn't get it in for last week's show. Um, what would that be? It was from RT. Uh, UK secretly arrested 16-year-old boy for world's biggest DDoS attack. DDoS? You gotta, you gotta tell this this old man what that means. That means distributed denial of service. <laughs> you know, it's basically a computer type thing. Here, well, I'll read a little bit. In okay, a surprise sure. development, it has been reported that several months ago, Britain's National Cyber Crime Unit secretly arrested a 16-year-old London schoolboy on suspicion of being involved in the biggest cyber attack in the history of the Internet. Mm. The rest of the teenager, whose name is not being disclosed, is part of the investigation into the distributed denial-of-service attack on Spam House on March 20th this year. That day, servers of the Dutch anti-spam organization, which tracks email spammers and spam activity, were at one point being inundated with 300 billion bits per second of data, three times larger than the previous record of the 100 GPPS. <laughs> nice. So, goes on to say, a teenager fell under suspicion after significant sums of money were found to be flowing through his bank account, yada, yada, yada. But, you know, I mean, this is a commercial crime, you know, against, you know, the machine, which the computer is a machine designed to be used uh, against us in this war of the hearts and minds. Absolutely it is. I was dealing with funny money and digits. And and, and and not to mention the fact that the boy is 16 years old. This is uh, essentially still a child we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he harmed nobody. Um, I just, I'm rather repulsed. I mean, it's kind of like uh, the NDAA, you know. And they try this stuff over, over uh, there in London, England, you know, Great Britain. You know, that's like their test mark, you know. I don't think they can get them to swallow the stuff there. Right. You know, we're next. And so what what are your observations over there and you're in um you know, the um Pacific Northwest. Yeah, what what's going on with the government shutdown and Well everything everything seems to be still open over here. Uh, I don't see any slowdowns. And the only thing I saw today that was peculiar was here in the Pacific Northwest. I didn't see any fishermen out today, so. Oh yeah. That's uh, I don't know. That could mean something. Yeah. Anyway, that was it. That was it. Just just nothing nothing else uh, happening. No shutdowns. No uh, people in the streets. You know, armed uh, personnel with the uh, megaphones and, and you no know, air raids. Nothing like that. It was all quite normal. How many people do you usually see out there fishing? Oh, a bunch, really. It's a bunch. So, hmm, everyone's like, hmm. Anyway, no fishing. Maybe they got wind of the, no, we could see. the Fukushima contamination. Oh, gosh. Dude, there's, yeah, everybody talks about that or doesn't talk about that. But no one's about that. What, they don't know about it out there? No, no, they know about it, but they just don't talk about it. You know what I mean? They they, they talk about it in two different circles. They're, you know what I mean? This it should I just say deny deniability, cognitive uh, goes, dissonance. Yeah, it goes it goes a long way with these people because when you're selling your fish, you're not going to be talking about radioactivity, now, are you? Right. You don't. Nobody wants to get into that and wonder how it's hitting the ecosystem. You know, as you see a seagull. You know, tearing into a carcass of a an old soreback. Stay out here on shore. Well, again, that's you know this this disaster of Gee, epic proportions. We we ought to do a show just on how much salmon is up here. All the different kinds of salmon. It's amazing. Oh my gosh! It's you know, and they're always running. They're always running all year round. Different different types. Anyway, another day, another show. 
Well, but smoked smoked salmon is good. I will say. Hell. Oh yeah. You put it on the grill, man. You just drop it on the grill and get your get your wood, your wood going. Make your own charcoal and uh, did that the other night. Just fire it up. Make sure she's glowing hot. Well, I Maybe thought you had to get salmon from a supermarket if, if you wanted to get <laughs> yeah. good stuff. I mean, oh, no. oh, no. I mean, nobody gets, you know, the federal government, federal state uh, doesn't get their cut if uh, you just go out and, and fish for it. Well, here's the interesting thing. You have, and then right along with that with that paradigm, have the uh, the conquered natives, you know, who have their special rights and privileges according to treaty law. So everybody knows about that. Yeah, it, it is. It, it's, it's time to, you know, re-educate ourselves to what's really been happening all this time. You know, this is where it starts, really. The real information you know, starts in your hometown, in your neighborhoods. Well, your house and your neighborhoods, obviously. Yeah, I mean, we're either on the precipice of a new renaissance here, or, you know, we're going to go dark, you know, but the ball's in our hands here. We really have to step it up and, you know, call a spade a spade. No, That's it's... another thing that gets me. They're, they're, they close national parks. You say right. Yeah, they don't. They don't close. Why don't they? Why don't they um, take every? Oh, brother, this would be complicated because they'd be going after congressmen. Yeah, you know, sorry. I know the answer to that. They have to make the people suffer. Nobody else can suffer. The other people, sorry, the other people. Yeah. Because they are the people. They are we the people. Right. <laughs> We're just chattel. Right. For the most part. Not you and me, but everybody else, pretty much. <laughs> so, well, yeah, we're trying to write it for everybody, but indeed, we are. Hey, okay. we got our banners out, and and we're we're taking the arrows. You know, we will encounter the Black Knight first. Indeed. Yep, and give him a choice whether or not he wants to have another limb lopped off or not. Oh, I'm going to put a spin on that. I'm going to be offering, still, the red pill will turn into a Matrix scene, you know. You want the red pill or not? The same thing, you know, with the CIA and the... Oh, yeah, the CIA. I was just going to jump in there. I was, I was waiting. I mean, isn't it funny? When were they When were they founded? And then I, I didn't... I forgot that part. The, when the CIA actually uh, came into existence. But around in 1958, somebody decided somewhere, hey, who are these guys? They, they, we, we need to see their books. Yeah, that, that was funny. And what happened? And they're like, oh, well, you know, we, we never formally did anything with that. And, and so much has been funneled through black operations, black ops, you know, with the technology. And it just went into the hands. Of, well, so we hear from insiders, you know, what really happened. And so nobody's ever really audited them, you know. It's like who's again? Yeah, it it falls into NSA and defense, you know. But there's huge holes, you know. They miss billions annually. But we're talking probably in their heyday or probably that first ten years, you know. Who knows how many billions just running like streams, you know? Well, once again, the CIA was created through the National Security Act. Uh, 1947. There you go, 47. So they had a good 11 years to run crazy. And they did. You can't have me to the You can't do it. Let me out of here. Let me. But I can't reiterate enough how it's a big psychological warfare game they're playing. You know, coercion and deception to get people to go and, and ask for their help. So they can say, yes, of course, we're here to help you. So, you know, we're going to give your your uh, food stamps back, you know. Sorry about uh, the price of bread going up four times in the last week. but <laughs> Maybe maybe our, everybody should be um, looking at the real cause. Maybe the, the Three Stooges government shut down. Right. 
<laughs> That's more plausible than anything I've seen so far. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Rich in content. You know, we should be so lucky as to have the Three Stooges running the federal government. Oh, gosh. I mean, can you imagine? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, they actually had morals. They were just looking to get a little, you know, not uh, not steal the whole farm and put everybody in the, <laughs> in the stockade and poison and murder their offspring so they could just create a slave race. Nothing like that. It's just good old-fashioned fun. Listening to Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. 100% listener supported radio. Reporting the danger. Unafraid. Right here where information never sleeps. Revolution. 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 Radio. I don't know. It's just, to me, it looks like a big psyops. And. We got, uh, you know, we got to start, you know, discerning this stuff for ourselves and figuring out what mm -hmm. the grand scheme is. What is the grand scheme? Hey, there's Rocco Vanzetti, the kitty, with the uh, with with the bomb running in the Skype picture there. That's <laughs> right, the bomb run, the bomb running. You know, it's an early Felix the Cat version of a of a bomber group. I don't, I forget the bomber group that that's uh, the mascot or icon of. But World War Two days gone by. So where are we at? Ah, uh, freedomslips dot com. Uh, I, I don't expect this. We're already here. Basically, because. We had somebody represent us, and you know, just just by following the program that we get from our parents because they were programmed, thrown into the educational fool system, public fool system, Hitler youth camps. They're, we're trained to be good patriots, salute the flag and all, even though the flag is a basic representation of uh, war and you know being captioned being captured so oh yeah we got a lot of different angles here than you might hear from your even your alternative media because unlike Alex Jones I'm going to tell you who the new world order is and I'll just give you a quick recap for our new listeners it's basically uh, stems from the Atlantic Charter of 1941, where Congress was given, that's the United States Congress, which we'll just call Congress. Right, here and after, known as Congress. And it is the Senate and the Congress, or House of Representatives, congregating together that makes up the Congress. So it's basically Senate and the House. Not my house, but what they refer to as the house or the House of Representatives. And, um, yeah, that's the New World Order. It's Congress. World Dominion, Congress, I don't know. New World Order, World Dominion, New World Order, World Dominion. I don't know. Make up your mind. Is that what that means? But, uh, yeah. It sounds the same to me. Infiltration of the world is the CIA. But um, you can go back to the archives and listen to our show and uh, Leaving the Farm is another show that will talk about this stuff. You know, and, you're, you're, and they're both, both of those shows are on this network right here. We're the only network here in the world that has any shows at all regarding the public law. <laughs> So. There's no other show in the world like the Bo and Rocco show. Yep. All right. Well, what's been on your mind this week? What do you see in your neck of the woods? I don't get a chance to talk to you and prep for the shows anymore. I hope we can get that. Yeah, we're out. gonna we're gonna get that rectified. Things have been 
uh, slow going as you know I had to move into uh, a new location and then I'm I'm dealing with the just a situation where I gotta basically <laughs> move some people out of the way and uh, you know cut out the uh, the deadwood as I say yeah there's just a situation which will make this all easier probably in two weeks I'm thinking and I'll have regular internet access availability and i got the phone on so uh, things are looking good communication will be running top notch i'm told i'm told so there you have it that's what i know all right what's uh, consensus reality about the government shutdown over in your neck of the woods oh okay, consensus reality well come on this is who we hang with you know our crowd we we shoot this to pieces um and there are just people living in Disneyland surrounding us, you know, zombies. And uh, I, I don't think it affects them at all, quite honestly. You know, the consensus reality around me is cognitive dissonance. So, yeah, there's really not much to say. People, you know, the, the gerbils are still running on their little uh, hamster treadmills, you know, wheels, gerbils and hamsters. That's the consensus reality I see. Yeah, sticks and carrots, and they and they go for the um, they can can continually chase after that carrot their whole lives usually. And yeah, it's only it's only sad. it's only people in our circles where uh, we we know what's going on. We see the dog and pony show. Oh well, we ran out of money. I'm thinking, when did this whole uh, congressional shutdown thing come about? I remember, it was Clinton, you know. The Democrats and Clinton, it just seemed to be the trendy thing to do now. Oh, we're going to shut everything down. You know, it just started as a, as, as a political tool, a political weapon, you know. And, and, it, and it has blossomed into this. The scam we know is the government shutdown. Nothing gets shut down. Like I said, uh, when did human hy- uh, trafficking stop? When did hypothecation stop? When did the bombs stop falling? When did the bullets stop? There was no shutdown. Uh, soldiers are still pulling triggers. Uh, who do the soldiers work for? Answer me that question, and then that says it says it all. If the government, if the soldiers don't work for the government, and things have been shut down, then who are they really working for? And if things are shut down, or they're still shooting people. You tell me who they're working for. Yeah, well, as of the 1947 National Security Act. Um, they became the military for the United States Incorporated, which we know is, you know, maintained by Congress. Okay, right, so. Congress is the original boogeyman, the the man behind the curtain. Oh, don't look, don't look at the man behind the curtain. It's it's like, come on, man. When are people gonna wake up and and really do something about this? Yeah, it only takes a few, so. Um, I decided to go ahead and start without y'all. Yeah, um, me too. Done with the protests. Done with the petitioning. Done with the writing nice letters. What we've done has gone right for the throat. No more nice letters. If it ain't right, you gotta indict. Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, 100% listener-supported radio, and now we return you to your host. Welcome, this is Kat, and you're listening to the second edition of This Is Your Revolution Radio, and my special guests tonight are Bo and Rocco of the Bo and Rocco Show, which is on Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern on Studio A. Yeah. Hey, excuse me a minute. We do have Rocco on the Can you hear me now? Yes, you thank you for calling in. I'm so sorry. I thought that the phones were forwarded to me, but apparently they're not. <laughs> but you have my, my personal Skype number. Thank you, Justin, for for giving yeah. it to him. So welcome aboard, Rocco. Well, thank you. Good to be here. 
Yeah, thank you for, for joining us. This is actually the very first time I've had the pleasure of speaking with you. <laughs> right. So, well, the pleasure is both ours, I guess. That's yeah, that. I have both of you on the line. And um, I also have Steve Travesty, who's who's been talking with Bo. But um, we need to hear about Rocco. No, well, not really. You need to wrap your mind around the restrictive principle of sovereign immunity. So there you go. Okay, what do you need? What do you need to hear? Tell, to tell me Rocco? your story. Um, how oh. how did you come to be? Pretty much, basically, how did you come to be on our station? What what you want, led you, you want to some, that? All right, right. Some background in my MO. So, yes, sir. Way back when, June 2009, um, I had a, I would say a catastrophic event in my life. The, the ex-wife, or the wife at the time, uh, came forward, or uh, got law enforcement involved, and uh, said there was... Um, intentional abuse to my children. So uh, fast forward, charges were filed, trial ensued, and in the name, you know, I was found guilty. So as, as my eyes were opened, and and during the struggle, this was, this was here, so 2009, I came into contact, or I ran into to Bo. We were both, you know, students, at, at law students at and a bunch of things. And so we, we got together, we met, and we, we formed this alliance and friendship. And then um, we were just throwing stuff up against the wall. We were realizing this doesn't work. You know, we were trying our darndest. And uh, and we met up with, fast forward again, with a woman named uh, Tammy Cochran. And she was just uh, beginning to uh, teach us things. So we... Uh, I mean, we, we signed on to the light bulb went out to both of us. So that brings us here and now. And I just heard Bo talking about, you know, restrictive principle of sovereign immunity. Um, we're basically saying this. We realize that name um, has been controlled. The name we, we told we have is ours, your given name, John Q. Public. Uh, you know, that's yours, and we're realizing there's a whole lot going on. There's, there's trading, there's investment off that side. There's a whole lot of presumption. And we, then we started looking at, you know, the, the bankruptcy of the United States in 1933, and then say, like, holy cow, you know, charters and treaties. And, and we, we realized that the people in power, Congress, we realized Congress has just been... Um, ordering everybody around by, you know, we got into, by what right and authority? It's just that simple. Congress, by what right and authority, is ordering us all around. And then we uncovered two two big crimes, and basically the derivatives off of those two are it's human trafficking and hypothecation. Everything else is, is a derivative. We can just keep this simple, you know, uh, theft, um, robbery, kidnapping, all of that would fit under, you know, human trafficking and hypothecation, securitization, the whole hijacking of the uh, the money supply through uh, uh, through manipulation and an outright theft. So so there, I could stop there. <laughs> you don't need to stop. You can keep going up until uh, the break. Well, <laughs> I, I mean, I could, you know, that's why we do the show every week. We boo, you know, we're, we're full throttle. So... I mean, there's a lot. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm skipping. I'm island hopping here for you. Um, so as of late, um, okay, back to the name. We, we, we've basically said this. We submit, or submit, a put forth, give the authorities notice. Hey, there's been a mistake. Number one, you guys. Um, I'm seeing evidence of human trafficking and hypothecation. Number one, I want to come forward and say, my bad. I'm. I, I gotta forgive myself. I gotta forgive myself first for being part of this system, okay? Number one thing. Call it a spirit walk, but you, you, you gotta come to terms and then look at this world and say, what's really going on here? Can I be honest? <laughs> I gotta forgive myself. Um, and, uh, they're, they're, they're working in, in the land of the dead. Everything is civilly dead. Everything on paper. Is uh, is a 
tends to uh, he has attributes of a corporation of of uh, code. And you gotta wonder where does code come from? Statutes, codes, ordinances. Again, by what authority? By what you know? Anything required? They say you're required to do that. Well, my research indicates that word "require" means by right and authority, or authority and right. Not just it's not. They cannot just say we have the authority to do this. They have to have the authority and right. So, back to documents filed in number one. I forgive myself. For forgive this document. Uh, you guys think I'm dead? <clears throat> well, I'm, I must be dead, or the name must be dead, because all the evidence in the world, uh, for instance, I know people have gone in and gotten the birth certificate, and the receipt comes back, death certificate. So all these clues, learning the way, learning along the way, we're discovering, wait a minute, uh, if that thing is civilly dead on paper, okay, you could be dead on paper, but I'm not dead, I'm walking around breathing, Right. So what's going on there? If if we're using a birth certificate, social security card, driver's license, we're walking around with their paper that says, this is a dead thing. This is a dead thing. This is a franchise. And if we're holding it and saying, this is mine, or, or I'm using this, I got to have this. Well, you're, you're, you're showing your, <clears throat> you're not complete. You know, you, you, you need them. You're in a pending state. You... You're going for or accepting privileges and benefits. You're, you just skipped over rights because you assumed they had the rights over you. And now you've kind of been brainwashed. And we're committing joinder when, when you do that. When you say you're the thing, I'm the dead thing. <laughs> An officer, um, whatever his face, is going to come up to your window and says, is this you? If, if you, you know, see the flashing lights, you pull over. Officer walks up. I want to see your license. You hand him a license, and he asks you, is this you? And you say, yes. He's like, I, I got everything I need. Well, well thank you. Um, he, he, you're going to be administrative as such because you're under their license. You signed a contract. It's all Contract law, it's all contract law, it's all contract law. Say that to yourself. Everything you interact with another human being with, you know, or a corporation, is, is a contract. So you got to step back and just look at everything. Well, like I said earlier, if we have a system of human trafficking and hypothecation, and you believe that, all of this makes perfect sense. Um, Congress pr uh, printing money off of our backs, off of our... I think everyone can relate to this. You know, we're in, quote, we're in so much debt that our grandchildren's grandchildren won't be able to pay this off. I mean, everybody's heard something like that, right? Well, you gotta, you gotta look at that and say, well, how could that ever be? How did this ever come to be? How could a generational debt, you know, be, be created? And this goes back to Congress. Who's giving the orders? Or my favorite is um, the executive orders. Who's giving these orders? And uh, if everything's a contract, all I know is uh, whoever's giving the order, you must pay for that order. Okay? You, if someone calls you on it, it'd be like going up to McDonald's. I want a cheeseburger and fries. Fine. You're ordering me to, to do that? Fine. I will do that. But you got to pay for that. So, um, I, the same thing with Congress. Congress says, you shall do this. Oh, what right and authority? Do, oh, go ahead. Do it. But you're going to get a bill from me. Um, I guess I can stop there. Yeah, I, I actually, I, I did have a question um, okay. regarding the uh, fee schedule, but we'll get to that when the break is over. All right. Perfect. All right. Thank okay. you. <laughs> and I am that host. I'm Kat, and this is your Revolution Radio. And uh, during this extremely long break that we were just on, that really should be at the top of the hour between this show and the one that I produced that comes on after this show, so that I could have a little bit of free time to go and do normal between show stuff. Um, I was watching our chat room, which I really would like to invite you all to come and be a part of. 
it's funny how our family has grown and the personalities that we have in in our chat and and I've become very close friends with a lot of the people that I've met through the station and I'm watching a little interaction <laughs> between two people that I care very much about and and it's almost almost escalating to an actual argument but they keep backing away a little bit with, you know, a little punch and then backing up and then a little jab and then back it up. And it's kind of funny to watch. So, like, come on into the chat and, and check it out. It's a little, it's pretty entertaining. <laughs> anyway, um, I did want to talk about the chat family um, as part of my show since the show is about it being your revolution radio. Um, each of the people who are currently on the line have been a part of the family for a long while now. Every one of us that is here, I've been with the station pretty much from the beginning. Um, I remember when, when Bo and Rocco first had their actual show. Uh, I remember hearing them on the, the roundtables, which the roundtables had been... Um, had been the initial part initially originally it was just hawk coming on the air and talking and then he opened up for calls he said you know if you want to debate with me or talk with me about what i'm talking about call in and people did and it was pretty cool and then uh there was the round tables where a bunch of people would get together and talk with each other and interact together. And it was awesome to listen, even though there was a lot of F-bombs at that time, way back before we started editing our, our conversation so that more people would actually stick around and listen. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then people started actually having a show. And Bo and Rocco have the first... Well, not the first show, but the the longest, the, the people who stuck around, who didn't give up and, and move on to, to some other thing. I had a show myself, and I didn't – well, I, I got sick, and I, I ended up in the hospital and stuff, and I couldn't actually do it for a while. And then I never came back until now. Now is my first show in the two and a half years since then. So I have to – give you guys kudos for sticking it out for nearly three years now. Do you remember the date of your first show? Uh, no, it's not coming to hand. It's not coming to mind. <clears throat> but, again, yeah, like two and a half, three years, something like that. Uh, I mean, we we had, like I said, this, this like this uh, station has evolved, we evolved. We, me and Bo, started, we actually met up on a website, you know, um, in the fall of 2009, and uh, we were just doing nonstop studies. So out of that that website, you know, then we all um, found Skype, you know, and that beautiful tool because you can send so much instantly, and um, you know, files, data, you know, and then and then it became the whole Skype chat room, and instantly, you know, you're coast to coast, anywhere in the world. And we all started talking, much like. You know, Nighthawk with the, with the station. Yeah, it just sort of evolved. Well, let's have a call. We'll call in. Well, well geez, we need more seating, you know. And, and then eventually we just ended up in the same place. And uh, it's been an evolution of, of uh, all good things. So more and more people are, are hearing this point of view and stand. So. <laughs> Bo just yeah. said first radio day show date good question yeah mm -hmm. I don't remember my first show date I never in in my wildest dreams back then did I realize that it was going to still be here now and have two studios and 24 7 broadcasting whether it's rebroadcasts of something had been on earlier or the uh, live round tables that we have overnight and Steve who's on the call with us right now is the uh, manager of the round tables at night he's the one that makes sure that you know if 
if somebody can't show up for their show that something does happen anyway. And it's been amazing, the growth that we've had and, and the hosts that have come on. Do you remember my brother, Tom? Tom Gilroy? Oh, well, you know that name. Yeah, we had, yeah, we had shows where we were on together. He's your brother, huh? He's my brother, yeah. And he, I brought him, I was listening to Mike, and this was really pretty much before the station actually took off and, and began to be what it is. Um, I had told my brother, you got to listen to this guy. And so he started listening, and I, he was on the same path, the exact same path, only he went a different route than you guys. He had actually been in Washington, and he was on the uh, Council of uh, Foreign something. Foreign Relations? Yeah. He was, he was on there. Um, they were actually at, at a point where he was about to become a United States diplomat, and he had been at a meeting. And there was a lot that went on. And Tom realized that in order for him to continue, he would have to check his morals at the door. And he couldn't bring himself to do that. So then he yeah. went the total opposite direction and became sovereign and is living right. a sovereign life. So he didn't want to become a Rockefeller, huh? No. The, the price was too high. Because that's for pretty him, much... Yeah. You know what it is. I mean, look who founded, who funded and founded, you know, the, the UN building, the Council of Foreign Relations, all this. The, these elitist players, global, globalists, you know, Rockefeller, David, Nelson, uh, they're, they're all pit of vipers. And they're controlling, you know, they're elite globalists, elite global corporate uh, tyrants, basically. <laughs> They right. want to control. They oh, you got to have uh, one-off phase in your light bulbs. You're going to put in the, these mercury bombs. Do, do you know, I listened to a story the other night. Uh, don't want to take up too much time here, but one of those things blew up in a mother's bedroom right, or, or the, for the baby. The mother called in and said, "What do I do?" Oh well, ma'am, you got to have that cleaned up. Guess how much it cost her to clean up an exploded mercury bulb? Boom! Just burst, popped. Um. It cost her two thousand dollars for a hazmat cow. team. A hazmat team. So people, I mean, are you not pissed off yet? Have Come you seen? On. Have you seen what the injury upon flesh contact for these things are? No, it's disturbing. No. Yeah. It's like a flesh eating virus. Right. Oh, yeah, mercury, mercury, because that's the same crap in the vaccinations. And, you know, the bigger thing when you look at it, um, I mean, we could get into conspiracy and everything, but mercury. Um, I, I was actually listening to David Icke. David Icke is out there, but but you know what? Sometimes the evidence he, he puts is, is just staggering. Like harp, and I was drawing a direct correlation between, you know, harp and these, these smart meters. Oh, by the way, that... Word smart is a buzzword for the elite. You know, smart homes, smart phones, smart meters, smart this, smart that. It's, it just means the devil. So <laughs> smart means the devil. Keep that in your mind. Nothing, you don't want anything to do with anything that's smart. Um, Except me. Uh, I'm smart, and you want something to do with me. You want to listen to my show. Correct. Okay. <laughs> Here and define the common definition. I, this is your court, and you can define things and we got a word yes so you speak it and it is so yeah yeah are we, under, are we under webster's dictionary black's law nine through the satanic bible here uh, I, I just want to know the jurisdiction of the court <laughs> <laughs> do the public law public law do no harm that's the jurisdiction so yeah that's what i'm bringing um, I like but, yeah but but, but the, back to that uh well, maybe, maybe, you know what, get me off on the Mercury tangent some other show because I'll talk about Nazi experiments. And you really don't want to get Yeah, there you know what, that, that ought to be the topic of one oh of my your gosh. upcoming shows. Or maybe we can you, do a roundtable fun, one time. Oh, and it's fun, fun stories. You just Google Nazis and Mercury, and you're going to hear all sorts of stories. Zero Point Energy, Nick Cook, um, a sub filled with, you know, Barrels, secret operation, barrels and barrels of mercury. You gotta ask yourself why. Um, just a fun thing to look into when you got time. So, this mercury thing 
is 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 just in our face. You know, one of the things. So. Oh, an- another you. interesting thing I found out about these bulbs, which is even if they never break. Uh, there's something called uh, dirty electrical power, and y- y- there's something just off about the power regulation of those bulbs in the in and of themselves. And what this basically translates to is is that it's actually leaking a, a, an electrical kind of radiation. Uh, so you're actually uh, uh, you're actually subjecting it, it's like subjecting yourself to uh, to living under a big Wi-Fi. Uh, yes, uh, you know, yes. System David, and it's giving you cancer. Yeah, David, David, I put a, David, I put out this great video, and he, he got these reports. And the governor, how dumb it is, they they said, "Well, let's get a report on this. Of uh, how safe are these?" And, and one of these was like it was like written from a, a scientist. It was with the the um the attitude behind it. You could just read it. It was like, "Are you out of your mind? You you cannot have." You know, this overlay of the power grid with mercury bulbs and smart meters, you know, it, it, they, they both dovetailed. This report said it interferes, especially with the, the young, the, 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 the brain waves, children. Uh, it, it, it just went on and on and on. It, it overmaps the brain and it, and it create like, perfectly these hurts. We, we all know that, well, I know, and me and Bo know that how, how many minutes into watching TV, it lowers your the, the cycle of your brain. It, it's it's proven. So they are constantly manipulating us, and this and mercury light bulbs and smart meters are just part of the program to dumb us down to in a way that they're putting us in an unnatural environment, a a matrix, a prison for the mind, if you will, and and they're just keeping us in this unnatural state. We're not in tune with the earth around us or the people where we're kept, you know, paranoid, worrying, a slave status. It just helps um, oppress us. These are tools of oppression. That's all. I yield again. You yield? (laughs) (laughs) I've heard that term before. (laughs) I, I don't know how much to say. I don't know when the starter stops, so... Well, we yeah, yeah. And, and we would have in the beginning of our of our time here at Revolution Radio, we would have been looking for statutory remedies to all this stuff. But it wasn't <laughs> until later, till we were introduced uh, to the public law and started studying the material that uh, Tammy Peppermint brought forth, you know, that really opened our eyes to the to the even bigger picture, you know, and then brought in the aspect of the National Security Act of 1947, which facilitated, um, you know, later on the Office of Population Affairs, which, um, you know, hands down uh, mandates to the Department of Health and Human Services. So come to find out now, it's the Department of Health and Human Services that, uh, you know, created through Congress out of that National Security National Security Act that's killing us. So, we're, and we're all being patriotic to Congress, the thing that is killing us. So, it's killing us to have people living like this. So, that's why we uh, do the show. Yeah. And, I, and yes. it's appreciated that, that you are willing to step out. That's one of the things that I absolutely love about the station is that people do have a voice and can say these things and there's nobody to tell them to shut up except maybe me. I tell people to shut up every once in a while. But no, <laughs> never mind. <I'm> kidding. <laughs> I have um, Olive from our chat room on the line and he has a question for you guys. Yeah, first of all, I want to thank you, Kat, for uh, ex- taking my call. And hello, Bo and Rocco. Um, hey. Yeah, um, my question is, I was kind of uh, bouncing off uh, Tammy Peppermint the other day on uh, Skype, you know, through chat, but I didn't actually get an answer. I don't know if you talked about this the other day, Wednesday. I kind of, I did miss your show. I usually don't miss it, but um, it's about the birth certificate. Now, if you could, like, talk about how the straw man and how the government uses it uh, as, like, uh, a bond for a million dollars or whatever – at the stock market. But as you do that, my main question is where I didn't get answered is 
Okay. There seems to be a difference between, and you can tell me if this is true or not. I've been trying to do some research on it. A birth certificate and a certification of birth. Those are two different things. I guess Barack Obama had a certification of birth, but they, he has no birth certificate. Right. You got a birth certificate and a certificate of live birth. It's the COLB and the BC. Right. You know what? I started out down that road. I mean, those those are really their side issues. I mean, we can we can reference those. As we just say this is all hypothecation. We don't want your benefits. So I'm, we're not trying to go in there and wrestle for uh, our piece of the pie, if you will. It's in that realm. We we give evidence on the record. We say, you know what? Something uh, stinks here, and we're gonna stand in total light and truth, and say, I'm going to put this uh, on the record. Because when you start, uh, you know, getting in their system and using their forms and start inquiring, you're, you're already saying, yeah, administrate me better. Yeah, administrate me better. I, I want another, you know, as, as we jokingly say, um, you know, spank me, spank me, midway, make me wear the rubber underpants. Because you know, look at it. <laughs> And, and you're under the law of infants, okay? That's the other thing. How can anybody who's under the law of infants, if you haven't stepped out and said, I'm sorry, I want nothing to do with it, you're, you're walking in the court, you're going in there with diapers on, sucking your thumb, uh, telling the judge, blah, 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 or, you know, ga, ga, goo, goo. And he's like, oh, okay, I'll do my job. I, I guess baby needs a spanking. Baby needs uh, some more administration. That's so I don't get off of that, so. Right. Is, so, so is, is there a difference between a, a certification of birth and sure. a birth certificate? That's what I'm trying to figure out. That's exactly. not our. That's not our focus. Uh, yeah, there is, but that's not our focus. You know what I mean? It's just not our oh, focus. Know, we don't. Okay. Hey, we don't. We don't get into that. Um, Basically. Uh, maybe I should. Maybe maybe you can't answer it if you don't get into it. But I actually have a question because I have a copy of my uh, of my certificate of live birth. Uh, issued by my state. This isn't the bond, right? And you, we all know how the straw man situation works. The way this is written specifically on my paper, uh, where under where it says this child it says the child's name first. It's got a uh, Stephen, uh, uppercase right. S, and then lowercase T E V E N, right? You know that that spelling that that's not the legal fiction. Then my middle name uppercase for the first letter and then lowercase for the rest, just like my first name. Now, my last name, we'll say travesty, right, is sure. all uppercase, the enfranchised. That's how it's written officially on my certified certificate of live birth from the town yeah. I was born in. What does that mean? You know what? So to me, it means nothing. It's a style. We look at, we look at uh, how the last name, okay, has been patented in, in one sense. We stay away from that. We make that last name our house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, Rocco Van, House of Zeddy. We go in, I'm not, you know, Rocco Van Zeddy. I am, I'm alive, you know. Um, yeah. When, when I, when I enter all my court material with this traffic case mm -hmm. I mentioned or earlier before you called in, everything is head as uh, Stephen of the Travesty family. Everything is, well, is headed that way. Uh, you know, the, the main thing, of course, is the case itself is the straw man, so that's Stephen Travesty, you know, uppercase. And then yeah. and then it goes on and it says, and this is in every single motion I've, I've filed ever, it says, now comes a natural person, Stephen of the Travesty family, in my own proper person. I may have been mistakenly named as the alleged defendant, Stephen Travesty, and that's written in all capitals. In defense of Stephen Travesty, I hereby come as the alleged defendant, and then whatever the uh, the uh, the motion or, or or whatever it is I'm submitting to the court is titled. Right, I did, man. You just dropped a bunch of stuff in there, man. I've been years. Me and Bo have gone through that. Still, boy, we we have to talk. <laughs> okay. Uh, inappropriate persona. I, I've been through it all. Pro se. No, you don't want to see this. Want to see this? All of it. I had to back off and say, wait a minute, see, this is their their court with their own copyrighted law that, that they're running. So if you're, you're still, you, you've got to do uh, some other, you got to do another approach. That's what, you know, we're saying, because you're still receiving benefits and privileges rather than standing before them 
Yeah, right. yeah. I, I, I have no illusion the that this is. Yeah, I have no illusion to the fact that this is all about defending uh, one of those uh, 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 th- those those benefits, those privileges, right now. Because all of this boils down to is, if I don't participate in the system, they uh, they will suspend my driver's license until I do. And uh, and if I don't have a driver's license right now, mm-hmm. as per my various statuses, if I go out on the road. Um, you know, they'll just use one of their fancy New World Order license plate scanners. They'll know what's up. Um, they sure. will arbitrarily pull me over, and I'll have to go through it again, and it'll be even worse because I don't have a uh, 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 valid paperwork. Well, okay, that's that's part of the paperwork. Yesterday we got a forgiveness document, and then the fee schedule. I didn't. I didn't even mention the most important piece, which is the appointment of executor. But we can get to that. I mean, we we could talk about. Uh, uh. Yeah, we have you're about three saying, minutes before break. Issues. We have about yeah. three minutes before break. So if you're going to start a subject yeah. that'll take you more than three minutes, it's probably best <laughs> to avoid it. Um, you know what? We have a fee schedule that pretty much covers everything. If they want to interact with us, they want to offer a contract. Remember how I said three times, everything is a contract. Everything is a contract. Everything is a contract. Stop. Who are you? Here's my fee schedule. I have you know a bunch of copies, and I just hand them. You know, you're on notice. So when you see those pretty, you see that pretty blue light come on, have some fun with it, you know. Pull over, have your arms waving outside the window, pass them on, because he just said there's an emergency. Well, what are, are you, have you created an emergency? Have you done anything wrong? I, I put it to the 911 record when I got pulled over. As soon as those lights came on, I called 911 and told them yes. I was afraid for my life. Some, some, somebody's going to see lights behind them. Uh, I think hey, I, I for over that because I don't know what's wrong. That, that's very good. Hey, I like that. That's the, my style. That's what I'm going to be doing because I'm ramping up to the day where I'm going to do this and I, and I want to be live for it. I'm going to have it broadcast. So it will be fun. You'll get to see Rocco. Um, deal with the contractors, and then I'm gonna, uh, you know, uh, get a counter offer. So yeah, have fun with it. I mean, I so, so, I so put everything on the line. I don't. I'm just sharing. I'm not judging. I'm that guy. So Rocco will have his day on the side of the road, and hopefully, you guys can listen uh, to it right there and maybe get get a little insight or at least get a smile on your face. So do you do a, a revocation, a recession of Social Security number, and uh, then after that you would do, a, I, I suppose, a revocation, recession of the birth certificate, or do you, you go another route? You know what? It, yeah, another, another route. It's simply you put on the, on the public record, you, know, you put on your, your record list and say, I renounce any and all capitalization, all caps, how they're using the names. Right. Any any capitalization, any hypothecation, we're getting them in one shot. This shotgun blast covers everything. Human trafficking uh, and hypothecation covers every crime. Everything else is everything else is just a derivative. Then we get to orders. Why are you pulling the order? Are you ordering me to pull over? Okay, who gave you that order? And who gave it? And you go. So I want that guy here. And then doesn't it sound like another story? Uh, when's the last time you heard or the most memorable time we were only following orders? No, leave you that with the break. <laughs> we All were right. only following orders. Well, guess what? When you order something, uh, that's a commercial act. That's like going to McDonald's again. I want you to get out of your, get out of this car. Is that an order? I want a cheeseburger. Is that an order? Yes. <laughs> Whoever gives the order has to pay for it. Welcome back. I am your host. I'm Kat, and this is your Revolution Radio. And uh, that nice, bouncy little tune that you hear bringing you back to the shows was written by Hawk, as are nearly every musical piece you hear on our station for those bumpers. And uh, I, I really enjoy it. Hopefully, I'll have an introduction and a bumper of my own one of these days. <laughs> but um, I just, I, we're in the last half hour, and I want to respond myself to Steve uh, regarding what he had talked about with getting pulled over. And then uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Bo and Rocco since 
it is actually an interview with Bo and Rocco. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Steve, my brother, as I've said earlier, is sovereign himself. He he actually does not participate in the United States government or anything of that nature. And uh, you can contact him at, uh, let's see, let me think, Tom at WTPmail.com. And uh, he has been pulled over several times and has driven away after having a conversation with the officers that have pulled him over. So right. there, yeah, there is, uh, is this all a matter of just things he's verbally, uh, uh, said to them? Like, is he be like, does he not have a license plate on his car? He does not have a license or a registration mm -hmm. and he right. has been pulled over for not having that and has driven away. Um, Mm. He, they don't argue with him. He gotcha. knows, he knows the process. He's completed the process, and he lives the process. Now, sovereign life is difficult, extremely, and it is causes you to depend on other people for certain things. And so, um, in that, I can say that it's difficult for those people that he needs to depend on as I am one of them. And right. Oh yeah. Yeah. A brother got to eat a hamburger. Just remember that when you're talking to Bonaco. So <laughs> life, life has its challenges, but you know what? At, at least it's, it's true life. It's not a, a shadow of life, you know, looking outside of a window from the matrix going, they keep telling me this is life. No, you have an existence, pal. You have an existence well, and a that's life the thing. are two if, different things. If all of us participated in the process that my brother had gone through, if all of us participated in it, then it wouldn't be the difficult life that it is. Because we would all be helping each other and we would be coexisting. And as long as right. we followed the do not do no harm um, lifestyle, it wouldn't be difficult because we would be trading in, in vegetables and, and, you know, hunting whatever meals but, we managed to hunt but, and things like that. But go ahead. Right. No, I'm just saying they're experts at co-opting and manipulating. You somebody somewhere sitting back going, Well holy cow, how many listeners we got at the station? You, you know, if it, it becomes a problem or an interest, you know, somebody's gonna, you know, gonna come in and say, Hey, I'd like to be a part of this and you know, I want a piece of this so they can buy into and suppress and manipulate. This is their pattern of getting you dependent on them, you know, outsiders coming in. So we have to be pure with one another and be true. And, and not be tempted. You, you let exactly. the outsiders in, and they're, we're going to say, do you not see this? This all started as a great time. You know, uh, be wary of offers. Sit there and go, why are you talking to me? What have I got that you want? And, you know, so that's a, you know, look at the Rockefellers. Look at all these global, rich, corporate, you know, uh, elitists. They, they're just fighting their time. They're buying off people. And manipulating, so they want to control everything. They love to control this radio station. Well, we we yeah. are what we are, so they can't control us. We are okay. listener supported, so that we can't okay. be controlled as a station, and and as people, we can make that choice for ourselves as well, which is what okay. my brother's done. And mm. so I haven't. Because there's there was children involved when Tom was was making his choice. I still was an active mommy and and needed to keep an income in order to keep a roof over my head and everything. But I'm probably going to follow in his footsteps when when the time is right for me as well, because I also agree that we're giving power to those people who are currently in control just by following their rules. And, and I want to live the last years of my life controlling my own, my own destiny. Yeah. 
So I, I appreciate what you guys bring to the table. I, I don't always understand everything that you talk about because I haven't right. encountered those situations that you bring up, but <clears throat> I am aware that it is possible because Tom has shown me that, that you can not participate in that type of thing. And yes, it is very difficult if you're the only one doing it. It is very difficult to live that life because he's pretty much, he is in need of assistance when it comes to dealing with anything that has to do with, uh, uh, what's the word on the commerce? Sure. Well, we'll have, maybe we'll have time in, in the future, maybe the near future, to have a little uh, a round table of our own, you know? Yeah, that'd be Rainbow nice. Rainbow and Kim and Tammy and just, just lay out some things and say, here, you've been doing it this way? Well, this is the way we've been doing it. And just model it, you know, push it in front of them. Take a look at that. Do you see anything there that, you know? Well, there's uh, a lot of memory. There's a lot of memorizing involved also in what Tom did. He not only did he need to write up his affidavits and and, uh, you know, have them to present his papers, so to speak. But he also has to know them, know them inside and out. So if the papers were not in his hand and the officer asks him a question, he can just tell them exactly what's on the paper. And because he's capable of doing that, that is why he has been able to walk away or drive away in those situations when he was pulled yeah, over. You know what? That's the classic scenario in this quote unquote movement. You'll hear, you've got to know who you are. You know, when you heard that, it was just a bantering. You know, all the wrong people were saying it, okay? Quite honestly, you got to know who you are. But I know who I am, and it's correct. Rocco's telling you, in, in gentleness and humbleness of spirit, please, you have to know who you are, period. Yeah. Right. And just comfortably stretch out and have a lifestyle, have an existence of what have I got to do next? I got to check in with them. Who's them? And right. them is Congress. They're a derivative of Congress. They're all political subdivisions of Congress. Who are they created by? Congress. How come the only answer is Congress? And everybody goes, oh, oh, it's it's the Syrians. It's it's those crazy gang members. It's it's everybody. We got to look back. Who's been promoting a system of genocide in in in, in high complication? All these vaccinations, genocide. Back to the birth certificate. The moment that birth certificate, certificate of live birth, both of them. Boom, they're taking those little feet, okay? Those little feet and pressing them against the paper. You've got to ask yourself, what's going on there, right? Um, we covered that. We, we've uncovered uh, a treaty, and that involves that. If it patent, they are placing um, their seal over footprints. Now, you do a little more research on that. Who, when did that process start, or when did that practice start? What does it mean when you place a seal over footprints? I mean, your eyes will get straight wide open when you realize what the answer is. You're, you know, you're a pledge. Your human energy is a pledge by your mother, my mother, the informant, who signed the birth certificate. What you doing here? Well, I'm, I'm informing on this, and then when you see a baby, boy, a boy was born, a girl was born, we tell people, look up the word A. Yes, look it up in blacks. You know what? It's going to tell you it's a stock announcement. So that day they gave public notice. Little Susie, a girl, born on. Now they give a notice. You know what they give a notice for? Who... I'm giving you notice. Does anybody have a claim against little Susie? Oh, I guess if you don't answer it, then, then I've heard of the direction, the, the doctrine, parents betray, the state is the parent. So whose child is that? If you, if you, if you look at the flow chart, mommy informed on me. Um, she, she put me up as a pledge unwittingly. To Congress to say, oh, goody, goody, another baby is born. You know what that means? Do you know what that means? That means more money. Yeah. And, they, and the they, thing they, that really they, upset me when I first found out all of this, when, when I learned most of this from Tom and, right. and after he had done his D.C. thing, 
the thing that upset me the most was as a mother, I did the exact same thing to my children. The yeah. exact same thing. I, well, I didn't actually sign my daughter's birth certificate. Her father did. But mm -hmm. the thing is that we gave our children to the United States. I oh, felt we're so we gave them to the guilty. United Nations. <laughs> yes, and I Sorry. felt so guilty for having done that after I realized what I did, that I did this to my children as well. But, right. but. You give yourself and put it in writing. That's all you got to do. I'm sorry. My, my children now are aware of the situation. And perhaps when my grandchildren are born to my my daughter, they won't be put in that situation. Right. And you know, you know how we do that? We say, we deal with that. We say, a mistake has been made. I want to correct the record. Bad, my bad. I am so sorry that I ever did this. You don't even have to go the other way. You don't have to jump into commerce and say, ah, this is an uncomfortable contract. You didn't give me full disclosure. If you, <laughs> if you want to go down that road, you're going to be going 20 miles and plus into rabbit holes. Okay, what we do is you got to evidence it up on the record. Um, so we, that's what we do. We don't bring, Charlie, we're not playing a uh, plaintiff or defendant here. We're, we're coming in as the original. Here it is, the original United States that was pledged as human capital back in the Articles of Confederation. The United States of America is just a style. It says, this confederacy shall, well, I don't know the exact words, shall use the style, quote, unquote, United States of America. And when you hear Confederacy, you know, you're thinking Civil War. You're thinking guys in gray. No, the guys in gray, the guys in black are Congress. They're the Confederacy. Confederacy. Um, and it said, Articles of Confederation, it, it, we're, we're pledged as human capital, period. Then you'll get guys saying, well, that's done away with by the Constitution. No, they, they layered this. They got us looking in one direction and sucker punched us. You know? You, you know what? It, how then the, then the Constitution is basically its enabling clause as well. You're all pledged to human collateral. That's why we love babies, you know. <laughs> Congress loves babies because uh, that's how they get their bread and butter and, and control over us. So, so it's been it's really pleasurable to to have both of you on tonight. I really appreciate that mm -hmm. you were here, and I appreciate that you've been with this station for all this time and, yeah. and having the longest running show on the station and I have uh, posted both of your websites in the chat so if anybody's listening and they aren't actually actively at the the website for Revolution Radio which is freedomslips.com um, you can go to freedomslips.com when you are actively at your computer Go into the chat area or down at the bottom of the home page. There is also a link uh, for chat links. And you can go in and grab those websites off of the chat links page. 